Hello students, welcome to today's class on Theory of Machines. Today we will be starting a new topic, Brakes. In today's lecture, we will see the introduction to the Brakes and also see the classification and after the classification, we will see how the different types of Brakes work. So there is no doubt that Brake is a very important member of the machine. Brakes are used to retard the speed of a moving component. Defining Brake, Brake is a device which is used to apply frictional resistance to a moving body to retard its motion or to bring the body into a stationary position or to hold the body at rest. Brake performs this function by offering a frictional resistance to the moving member by a stationary member like a shoe or band. Brake absorbs the kinetic energy of the moving body and converts the kinetic energy to heat energy which is then dissipated to the environment. In general, in all types of motion there is always some amount of resistance which retards the motion and is sufficient to bring the body at rest. Also, after applying brake, the body or vehicle does not necessarily stop immediately. It takes some time and during this time it also travels some distance. The time taken to stop the vehicle and the distance traveled during this process is depend on the type of braking system we are using, also the surface area in contact, the peripheral velocity the, and the coefficient of friction, also on its ability to dissipate heat. By providing brakes, the external resistance is considerably increased and the period of retardation is shortened. Now, having defined brakes, let us now see the classification of brakes. Brakes are broadly classified in four types. Mechanical brakes, hydraulic brakes, electrical brakes and pneumatic brakes. Mechanical brakes are generally used for low power absorption and the rest three are used for high power absorption. In hydraulic brake, we use fluid. Electric brakes are used in generator etc. With the help of eddy currents, we apply the electric brake. Hydraulic and electrical brake cannot bring the vehicle to complete rest. They are generally used for a large amount of energy to be transferred by the brake in regard with load. They are used in locomotives. Hydraulic Pneumatic and electric brakes are used for high energy dissipation. We will be focusing only on the mechanical brakes. Brakes are devices that dissipate kinetic energy of moving parts of a machine. In mechanical brakes, the dissipation is achieved through sliding friction between a stationary object and a rotating part. These are used for low power absorption. Depending upon the direction of application of force, the mechanical brakes are primarily of two types. First, the radial brakes and another one is the axial brake. Depending on the direction of force applied, they are defined as axial and radial brakes. In axial brakes, the resisting force or the braking force is applied parallel to the axis and in radial brakes, the braking force is applied in the radial direction. These are further classified is axial brake is generally the disc brake and radial brakes are classified as bend brake, block brake and bend and block brakes. Though bend brake is classified under radial brakes but the force is applied in the tangential direction. We will see this later. The bend brake is also used to hold the part at its position. This function is applicable in hoists and lifts. These are further classified as simple band brake and differential band brake. Block brakes are also classified as internal expanding brake and external expanding brake. Internal expanding brake is most widely used in automobile. Block brakes are also used in locomotive. And band brakes are used in industrial machines. In brakes, frictional force plays a dominant role. Normally, it is modeled to be Coulomb's friction, where the friction is proportional to the normal force applied. This is very much known to you. So we shall use Coulomb's law with its assumptions to model the friction macroscopically. Having seen the classification of brakes, let us see the various brakes one by one. Band brake. It consists of a rope, belt or flexible steel band which is lined with the frictional material. This band is pressed against the external surface of the cylindrical drum. This is the cylindrical drum. 
when the brake is applied. The force is applied at the free end of the lever. This is the free end of the lever. This is a simple band brake. Simple band brake will neither have a self energizing properties nor it can be self logged. Now what are these terms we will see. So let us see how this works. So force will be applied on this in the downward direction like this. So this will be pulled up and the brake will be applied. The force is applied in the radial direction. So this is a radial brake. What is self locking brake? When the force needed to apply the brake is virtually zero or that once contact is made between the block and the drum, the brake is applied itself. Such a brake is known as self locking brake. Now what is self energizing brake? As the moment of the friction force above the pivoted point is in the same direction as that of the applied force, the frictional force aids the applying brake. This type of brake is known as self energizing brake. These are just the definition for now. You will understand these terms better during the analysis of brakes. This is the line diagram for the band brake. You can see this is the band or the rope or the belt. So in this case the drum is rotated in the clockwise direction. So this side will be the so this side will be the tight side and this side will be the slack side. So we are denoting the tight side as T1 and slack side as T2. And in this direction the force will be applied. These are the pivoted points. If the drum is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction then this will be the tight side and this will be the slack side. This is again the same example. This is the differential band brake. In differential band brake the tight side of the band is connected to a lever from the pivot and in the opposite side of the actuating force. This is on the opposite side of the actuating force. In this case the moments of actuating force and the tight tension act in the same direction which helps in reducing the magnitude of the actuating force or power consumption. So differential band brake requires less power to operate. This is basically an example of differential band brake. This is the portion where the drum is placed. This is the band or the steel strap which is connected by this lever and this has been pulled in this direction in the right direction when we are pressing the brake. So let's see how this functions. These are the typical bands. This is how the band is placed. This is how the band brake is functioning. So as and when this lever is pulled in this direction as it is pivoted here this side will be moving here so it will be tightened. So this is the direction of applied force. It will be applied in the radial direction. That's why it is a radial brake. Next, let us start our discussion on block brakes. This is the block brake. This is a single block brake and this is how the lever is pressed from the free end. Let us see it once again. This is how the block brake works. And this is the direction of the pressure or the force that has been applied by the shoe so it is classified as a radial brake. A block or shoe brake consists of a block or a shoe which is pressed against the rotating drum. The force on the drum is increased by using the lever. If only one block is used for the purpose, a side thrust on the bearing of the shaft supporting the drum will act. This will be prevented by using two blocks on the two sides of the drum as seen here. This also doubles the braking torque. So in this case, Two blocks are used on both the sides and force is applied from both the ends. So that's how the braking torque is doubled. A softer material than that of drum or the rim of the wheel is used to make the blocks so that these can be replaced easily on wearing. Next, the internal and external expanding brake. Earlier, automobiles used band brakes which were exposed to dirt and water. Their heat dissipation capacity was also poor. Then brand brakes were replaced by internal expanding shoe brakes having at least one self energizing shoe per wheel. This results in tremendous friction giving great braking power without excess use of pedal pressure. Figure shows the internal shoe automobile brake. It consists of two semicircular shoes. These are the two semicircular shoes which are lined with the friction material. These are the friction material. 
the shoe is pressed against the inner flange of the drum when the brake is applied under the normal running of the vehicle the drum rotates freely as the outer diameter of the shoe is less than the internal diameter of the drum the actuating force is applied by two equal diameter pistons in a common hydraulic cylinder and is applied equally in magnitude to each other let us see how this internal expanding brake works you can see these are the two semicircular brake shoes to which this friction lining is attached this is how the internal expanding brake works you can see as the pedal is pressed these semicircular shoes are pressed outside are moved outside to press the drum and the brake is applied see it once again so this is the friction lining on the semicircular shoe through this the brake is applied this is the drum on which this is mounted this is the spring by which these are the semicircular shoe brakes are expanded and they are pulled back by the help of this return springs these are the return springs and this is the self adjusting system as in when the friction lining is worn out you can adjust friction lining by the help of this screw in the self adjusting system so it can be used for a longer period so this is how internal expanding brake works this is the external expanding shoe brake in this the drum is pressed by the two shoes from the outer periphery this is the band and block brake a band and block brake consists of number of wooden blocks secured inside a flexible steel band so these are the wooden blocks which are wooden or rubber blocks which are secured inside the band when the brake is applied the blocks are pressed against the drum the two sides of the band become tight and slack as usual wooden blocks have high coefficient of friction thus increasing the effectiveness of the brake now let us discuss about disc brake it is widely used nowadays in your bikes in disc brake basically there is a brake caliper which is having brake pad inside it and this is the disc which rotates and the wheel is connected to this part so as the pressure is applied hydraulically through the brake hose these brake pads are pressed towards the rotor and thus the brake is applied so let's see how the disc brake works this is the typical example of the disc brake how it works let's see it once again the wheel is rotating and the force is applied like this this is the axis of rotation and these are the applied force so the applied force is in the axial direction that's why the disc brake is classified as axial brake so this is all about the basics of brakes and classification of brakes in next video we will see how the analysis of brakes is carried out Thank you very much.